This is Twit. So I guess I have to talk about these nudies. I don't want to. I don't think it's a happy subject at all. Um, but I think there's a tech angle that is fairly important. We're talking about the very unfortunate, really disgusting release of uh, private pictures from some major celebrities um, over the last week. And, uh, you know, the good news is I, f I think that the person who did it left enough fingerprints. I'm pretty convinced the FBI will be knocking at your door soon. Good. I hope they throw the book at you. Um, but here's what we need to know, because, of course, the question now arises, well, are my photos safe on the cloud? And the good news is, well, Apple's made one, a couple of statements. Uh, Apple put out a press release on Monday, or I guess it was Tuesday, in which they said, okay, uh, we've looked into it. We got on it right away. And as best we can tell, it was not a failure of our security on in iCloud or Find My iPhone. It was a targeted attack, and this makes sense, that hackers were able to deduce, figure out, or guess the email address for these celebrities and then use that to do what we call a brute force attack on their accounts. Keep trying passwords till they were able to get through. We think, and there was a known flaw in Apple's Find My iPhone that has been fixed, was fixed on Monday, that allowed people just to keep, if you could guess, if you could guess my email address, you could go on a Mac, at your Mac at home, and try passwords against my email address unlimited. Normally, when you try to log in a few times to something, after a while, it slows you down or it says you've tried too many times. Let's take a break. Those are all to keep hackers from doing something called brute force attacking. And uh, in this case, uh, there was a flaw in Find My iPhone. So Apple is at fault here in this respect, if this was the technique used, that allowed hackers to keep trying passwords till they got in. And as, as you might imagine, I would guess it's the case that the, the celebrities affected are not geeks. They probably didn't use advanced security protocols. They probably didn't use strong passwords. And they likely didn't use obscure answers to the secret questions. This is another flaw, and secret questions should not be allowed. But many companies, including Apple, if you've forgotten your password, you can call Apple and you can guess or go online and get the answers to your, quote, secret questions. The problem with the secret questions is, the things like your mother's maiden name or the street you grew up on or your best friend in high school. And in many cases, especially for celebrities, this information is known. So, so if a celebrity used their mother's maiden name, that's a mistake because you can find that out. In fact, my suggestion, first of all, banks and high security uh, facilities, iCloud, shouldn't allow secret questions. They only do it because they know people are going to forget their passwords and they need another way in. It's a bad way to do it. If you're going to use secret questions as an end user, don't give real answers. If they ask you what your high school team's mascot was, don't say the Cardinals. Make something up. Or better yet, do a completely random string that no one would ever guess, but you got to save it somewhere. Remember we talked about password managers. This is a good use for a password manager. In my Apple account, not only do I have my Apple password, but I have in the notes the three secret questions, and the three gobbledygook answers I provided. So should I need those, I can use them, but no one will ever guess them. You can't go to Wikipedia and find the answers. So that's flaw number one, and, and Apple did acknowledge that it was probably something around secret questions. But the more important thing is it's it, there isn't a flaw in iCloud that allows anybody to get in there, root around, and find anything they want. So we are not vulnerable unless you're being targeted by a hacker. If you if it doesn't mean you shouldn't use good security, and that means a good long strong password. Strong means random, not your kids' names, not your birth date, not your dog's name. Random mixtures of upper lowercase characters, numbers, and punctuation marks if they allow it. Mix those up, and and twenty characters is better than eight. What you may say, I can't remember that. No, you don't need to because you store that in your password manager. In fact, all password managers will generate good, strong, totally random passwords. Use those generators. It's really the best way to go. You should turn on second factor authentication. Apple is at fault here. Their second factor authentication is poorly implemented and unfortunately allows people to download their iCloud backups without authentication. 
And the evidence is that's where this data came from. Not the, not the photo stream, but the iCloud backups of the victims. And uh, the even if had, they had second factor authentication, it wouldn't have protected that. Apple was going to fix that, I'm sure. What I, it's bad timing for Apple. They've got this big announcement, and they're going to try to tell you on Tuesday, you can store all your photos with us. That is one of the selling points of the new iOS 8. Upload all your photos at, for free. And I think it's going to be hard for the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, to come on stage and say that with a straight face. Already he's given interviews to the Wall Street Journal saying, yeah, yeah we're, we're going to... What Tim Cook needs to do, and I think will do, is come on stage and say, we know there was a problem. We apologize. No, it wasn't a flaw in our system, but we, are, we can do more and we are going to do more. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to make the system more secure. And here's what you should do. And that's where I come in. Use strong passwords. Use gobbledygook uh, secret question answers. Use second factor authentication and do that across the board. Get a password manager. I recommended LastPass, but there are many of them. Dash, what is it? Dashlane, uh, One Password, RoboForm. All of them will work. KeyPass is free. Uh, and, and use it religiously. Make strong passwords. Never duplicate passwords. That's another common problem. If somebody could hack your Twitter account, get your Twitter password, and you use that same password in 15 different places, they just got all your passwords at once. So never repeat. Never repeat. I fully, given the information I've seen from uh, people like uh, Jonathan Zdarsky, who is a very sophisticated white hat hacker, I believe the person uh, who did this will be caught and will be going to jail. I, I fully believe that. But there are plenty of other people out there who are trying to get into people's systems. So you, it, it just behooves you, whether celebrity or not, it behooves you to use strong. It's not your fault. I'm not saying that. But we live in a, in a bad world with some bad actors, and the, <laughs> and the best thing you can do, if you're a good actor, is to make sure you have a strong password. You use gobbledygook secret questions. I wish companies stopped using secret questions entirely. But it, as long as they do, use gobbledygook secret an, a question, answers to your secret questions. And use a password manager so you make sure you don't duplicate passwords. It, if you do all that, you're safe. It's okay, to, it's okay to store your photos in the cloud, I really believe, and I do. Um, Christina Warren at Mashable, who's a good friend and a, a very talented tech reporter, uh, was able to demonstrate how going out and buying a password hacking tool called the Elcom Soft Password Manager, um, for 200 bucks, she was able to hack her own iCloud account and download the backup. 200 bucks. It's a brute force password cracker. And she applied it to her own account. And she showed how that how we're all vulnerable. Apple has to fix that. They have to turn on second factor on the iCloud backups. And I think they will.